Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I purchased over the last few months. I think the last time I did a book haul was back in February. So this is everything that I've accumulated over the months of March and April. And there are some new releases in here that I'm really excited about, but the majority of the books in here were mostly for book clubs that I'm a part of. So I had to get the books there and I couldn't, one of them I couldn't find at the library <laughs> anywhere. Um, so that's why I had to get the physical copy but yeah I have some also kind of media things as well that I'm excited to share with you so yeah without further ado let's get started so quickly just starting out with the multimedia I first have obviously fearless Taylor Taylor's version and I honestly was so excited when this was coming out like I was living like 13 year old me was thriving again I was really excited for this but I really loved even though the songs sound very similar there's something obviously very different about it you can just hear how her voice has grown over the past you know 10 years or so so I really liked that and just the nostalgia of these songs it reminds me of when like this was when I was in grade 9 so we would me and my siblings would come home from school and we would play a snowboarding game and on GameCube and when we were playing this game we would always listen to fearless so it kind of brought me back to that time and I do really love like her new songs from the vault I really like I think my favorites are you all over me mr. perfectly fine and we were happy and that's when <laughs> out of the six like those are my favorites but yeah it is just so good I love it I was just I'm so excited for the re-releasing of the next four albums as well it's just gonna be an exciting time and I also ended up picking up a copy of Wonder Woman 1984. We saw this when it was, you could do like a free trial for what, what is the HBO Max or whatever, you know, the Warner Brothers streaming thing is. So we watched it on, um, I want to say Boxing Day and so for free because you could stream it on there and then we just canceled the free trial. But yeah, I really like this one. I really like Wonder Woman and I really like how this movie is more focused on her grief and coming to terms with that. So yeah, I'm sad there's going to be like the last film in the, like, this trilogy, but it'll be fun to kind of marathon them all, especially since I haven't seen the first one in a really long time and then I haven't seen the second one since we watched it so it'll be nice to kind of you know rewatch them <laughs> to get ready probably a few years out before then the last one comes out but nevertheless I'm still really excited so starting out with the new releases I first have Sunflower Sisters by Martha Hall Kelly and this is the third and final book in the Caroline Faraday um, trilogy I guess you can say and I was very much anticipating this and it did not disappoint basically the premise of this trilogy is that we follow real-life women and their stories it's like a fictionalized story based on their contribution to kind of each major war in American history so the first one follows Caroline during World War II we follow Caroline's mother Eliza in the second book during World War One and then we follow their great aunts um, during the Civil War and so this one follows each book has three different narratives that are sometimes very in like they you don't see how they're in, like connected in any way but she ends up tying these three characters narratives together so in this one we follow Georgie who is their um, Caroline's like great aunt and she's very determined to become a nurse and kind of defy the gender stereotypes that were very prevalent in the society at that time so she wants to train to be a nurse to kind of help the union in the war effort and then we get two other storylines we get the perspective of a slave and then the slave owner as well you can see how the slave and slave owner narratives are very interconnected but you don't know how Georgie kind of ties into this but I really liked it this book was amazing and I do have a review you can go check it out to see what I thought about it but yeah I was so excited I'm sad that this trilogy has ended but I'm really excited to see what this author tackles next. This was another new exciting release that I was very much anticipating and it is In Her Tracks by Robert Dagoni and this is the newest release in the Tracy Crosswhite series. So I marathoned the Tracy Crosswhite series back in 2019 and I fell in love with this series. It follows a detective named Tracy who lives in Seattle and so the first book very much focuses on her reason on why she became a detective because her sister went missing when she was in her early 20s and Tracy was never the same after 
after that. So she's very much dedicated her career to helping people solve, you know, missing persons cases or cold cases um, in order to kind of not have those people really experience what she had to go through. And so it kind of follows her off there. And um, this is, like I said, the newest one. I was really excited for it. And it kind of shows Tracy in a new role. It's not a spoiler because it tells you in like the description here, but she's been reassigned. And so it's kind of her kind of adapting to this new role, but then there's kind of multiple different mysteries that she's also working on as well. So overall, I'm really, I'm like almost halfway through and I'm really loving it so far. This is a really good series if you want to kind of like marathon through because I think this is book eight in the series. So you have a lot of material to work with. I marathoned this in the summer of 2019. Like I remember, I think I read three books of this when we were in Barcelona. So that's what I think of when I think of this series. But yeah, it's a very good bingeable series to read. And another new release that I ended up picking up was The Next Wife by Kira, Kira Runda, I, th Ruda, I think that's how you say it. I'm totally butchering this name, but this is another kind of thriller that I'm really excited about. But like basically the tagline is deception and betrayal dark enough to end a marriage or life. Um, so I'll kind of read the back here because I feel like there's a lot of things going on. So it says Kate Nelson had it all, a flourishing company founded with her husband, John, a happy marriage and a daughter, Ashlyn, the picture perfect family. Until John left for another woman, Tish is half his age, ambitious, she's um, cultivated a friendship with Ashlyn. Trish believes she's, she's one, but she's wrong. Tish Nelson has it all, youth influence in a life of luxury and a new husband, but the truth is there's a lot of baggage, namely his first wife and suspicions of his infidelity. After all, that's how she got John. Maybe it's time for a romantic getaway far from his vindictive ex. If Kate plans on getting John back, Tish is one step ahead of her, she thinks. But what happens next is something neither Kate nor Tish saw coming. As best laid plans come undone, there's no telling what a woman will do in the name of love and revenge. I think this one is really interesting. It has a lot of themes of like kind of betrayal and revenge, and I love all those things. So I think this one will be an exciting thriller to read and especially like the interconnections of especially kind of this is like a love triangle gone wrong basically and I love that kind of trope like tilted on its head where it ends up in kind of like a murder mystery thriller type thing so I think this one is going to be really exciting I cannot wait to pick it up so this was an arc that I received and it comes out in June and I'm really excited for this because I liked the author's previous work and it is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides and I'm really excited for this one. I really loved The Silent Patient. I think he has a really, he brings a lot of beautiful writing and prose to kind of a thriller genre which is really unique and so this is going to be his newest release. Like I said, I think it comes out June 15th, I want to say 14th, 15th and I'm really excited for it. So basically it says, a spellbounding tale of psychological suspense weaving together Greek mythology, murder, and obsession. And so I think this one will be really exciting. I don't like for this one in particular, I don't really want to know too much about the plot. I just kind of want to go into it. So if you guys want to know more about this, you can find the synopsis on Goodreads. But in this one in particular, I just kind of want to go into it not really knowing what to expect. But I definitely will be reading this closer to its release date. I have high expectations for this one because I really think The Silent Patient was good. So um, I can't wait to try this one. And I like how it like basically the tagline is talking about how it's weaving together Greek mythology, murder, and obsession. So I think that one sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. So next these are the books that I purchased for a book club. So next these are books that I purchased in part of the book clubs that I am a part of. So the first one is uh, West with Drafts by Linda Rutledge and this is for the book club that me and my lab mate and her friends are reading. And so basically the premise of this is loosely based off of a historical event. So in 1938 these drafts, these two drafts were bought um, by the San Diego Zoo. So they are taken from Africa and they are brought to New York. But when they get to New York they basically a hurricane hits. So not only do they survive a hurricane getting to New York they actually have to travel across country from New York to San Diego and so it follows in this like these giraffes really cultivated the nation and everyone was kind of rooting for them because it really during the depression era it gave something like a communal thing for people to kind of like hope and believe in 
so it was quite a big deal at the time. So we follow uh, Woodrow Wilson Nickel, who is kind of this homeless guy who's very much down on his luck. He's very, he's running from something from his past, but we don't know it. So we follow this man when he, he's, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice, but we follow this man when he's like over 100 years old and he knows his days are numbered. So he's quickly writing down the events of him, you know, being involved with the transport of these giraffes across the country and so it's his story and he's writing it to someone but we don't know who necessarily this book like who she who he is writing this for and it kind of goes off from there but yeah this one was a I talk more about this in my wrap-up if you want to see but it was a good kind of integration of kind of animals and kind of historical events kind of leading up to World War II and I really like the themes in here of animals knowing like the meaning of life and all that stuff so I talk about more of this in my wrap up if you want to go see but overall this was a fun read. And lastly these last three books are part of a series that me and my friend, my other friend from my masters are reading for our book club. These are ones that she's read a couple years ago and so I'm not sure I understand. Oh my god, that scared the heck out of me. Sorry, Siri. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh, gotta love modern technology. But as I was saying, this is a series that she read a long time ago, and so this is what she chose for us to read for the book club. And it is the Shades of London series by Maureen Johnson, the first book being The Name of the Star, The Madness Underneath, and The Shadow Cabinet. And basically the premise of the story is we follow Rory, who is a teenager, and she ends up attending school in um, this boarding school in London. And while she's there, there's these strings of murders taking place that are eerily similar to those that were committed by Jack the Ripper. And it kind of takes off from there. And then Vaults, ghosts and all those things like I will say I've already read all these the first book wait you know I don't really like a lot of YA fantasy and I think this one has a lot of tropes in here and kind of problematic things that have not aged well and so I really like the first book I actually enjoyed a lot more than I thought it was so I gave this a three star the second book suffered from a lot of second book syndrome so that one was not good and then the third one you know was better but like this is not my favorite type of series but it's fun to kind of have that kind of especially now with because it's always our book club's always been virtual because we live kind of far away from each other um so yeah it's kind of has nice to have something to kind of talk about but i think there's supposed to be a fourth book in here i originally thought this was a trilogy but there's supposed to be a fourth book that was supposed to come out in 2018 and it's fallen off the face of the earth so it did i like the villain in here but yeah not my favorite type of you know YA fantasy type thing I did like the her like the first book I think is my favorite because it's I like kind of the history of Jack the Ripper and like the murder stuff but yeah not my favorite YA you know fantasy series so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of the books that you purchased recently and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time Bye guys.